my name is dr sanket pisat and i am a gynecological endoscopic surgeon practicing in mumbai india and today we are going to be talking about ovarian cysts what are they what are their types and one of the most common questions that patients come to us with is uh, does my ovarian cyst actually require surgery can it be managed by medicines or will it just go away on its own this is one of the most pertinent questions that is asked to us by a lot of patients and in today's video we are going to be trying to look at which ovarian cysts actually require surgery and which ovarian cysts can manage without surgery in order to understand this we must first need to understand what are the various types of ovarian cysts where they come from and then understand whether or not they require any treatment there are four or five specific types of ovarian cysts that are encountered to us in day to day practice of course there are a whole lot of varieties which are more rare and uh, occasionally have their presentation but for the most part uh, there are only a few common types that we encounter in day to day practice let's take a look at each of these one by one the first type of cyst is called as the simple ovarian cyst the simple ovarian cyst naturally is a collection of fluid inside the ovary at one particular location now during the course of normal uh, of the menstruation of in the woman these type of small ovarian cysts keep developing inside the ovary what these cysts are is actually a collection of fluid inside the ovary which is called as the follicle and one follicle naturally and normally develops in the body every month this follicle is supposed to rupture or burst releasing the egg into the patient's body in that month and then the next month there is another follicle that forms inside the other ovary sometimes this follicle does not burst and instead retains inside the ovary and keeps increasing in size slowly and steadily and this is what forms a simple ovarian cyst to cut a long story short simple ovarian cysts most of the times do not need any sort of surgery at all these simple ovarian cysts we have to just wait till the patient gets her period and most of the times after the patient has got her period you find that a subsequent sonography done after the menses reveals that <clears throat> this particular cyst has gone away completely now there are some types of simple ovarian cysts which may also require surgery these type of cysts are the ones which grow to a larger size say about 4 cm or more when a cyst has grown to 4 to 5 cm in size there is always a possibility that there may be some bleeding in the cyst converting the nature of this cyst from a simple cyst to a hemorrhagic cyst which is our second type of cyst that we are going to deal with today and if there is bleeding inside the cyst that means there is blood collected inside a pocket in the ovary and then this cyst has the possibility of rupturing or bursting at any time releasing this blood inside the patient's abdomen which may become a very difficult situation and it may become a surgical emergency hence these are the type of cysts that may need to be dealt with surgically other than this <clears throat> mostly these cysts can be managed by doing nothing at all or they can be prevented by uh, from coming back again and again by giving a course of hormonal medicines for about 3 months or 6 months and that is enough to take care of the problem so we looked at simple ovarian cysts and we looked at hemorrhagic cysts the other type of cyst that is commonly encountered in day to day practice is a corpus luteal cyst this is also more or less like a simple ovarian cyst this forms because of the hormonal changes that have taken place inside the body during every menstrual cycle and this again is a self limiting type of cyst and goes away after the patient has got her periods again the diagnostic criteria and the operative criteria restrict themselves to about 4 to 5 cm in size after which a hemorrhagic cyst or a simple cyst or a corpus luteal cyst can undergo one more complication which is torsion of the ovary torsion of the ovary means that the ovary turns on its own axis and therefore because it is turning on its own axis it kind of cuts off the blood supply that it receives and slowly an organ which does not receive blood supply from the rest of the body starts getting damaged and its function starts getting compromised 
So in order to avoid that, it is better that the surgery is performed when the cyst is detected and is four to five centimeters in size. And during that surgery, we can remove the cyst alone without removing <clears throat> the ovary. But in case the ovary does undergo torsion and is neglected for a long period of time, it may be required to remove the ovary completely because by the time we perform surgery, it may happen that there is no salvageable normal ovarian tissue left in the ovary at all. So in these sort of patients, it may be a good idea to perform a surgery earlier rather than wait and watch as a conservative practice. What are the warning signs and symptoms of torsion in which you will suspect or you will go to your doctor immediately? You will have a sudden acute pain on one of the sides of the abdomen and this may be accompanied by a slight fever and vomiting. If you have any of these symptoms, then these are the telltale signs for torsion and you need to see your doctor immediately because at this point now, surgery may be required. Performing surgery now may save the ovary and delaying it for a later date may cause permanent ovarian damage and one may have to remove the ovary during surgery rather than removing the cyst alone. So we covered three different types of ovarian cysts. The fourth common type that we encounter in normal practice is a dermoid cyst. A dermoid cyst is a fat collection inside the ovary. This is not hormonal in nature, but this is congenital or this is uh, there since birth. The size of the cyst keeps increasing gradually as more and more fat collects inside it. And along with fat, because this ovary, because this collection is by certain cells which grow from the other parts of the body, you will be surprised to know that there may be hair, tooth, bone and cartilage and some such other abnormal tissue located inside this ovarian cyst. Now, these type of cysts do not normally undergo any sort of cancerous change. Neither do the previous three cysts that we have talked about. Unless the dermoid cyst is detected in a girl who is very young, less than 10, 12 years of age, the possibility of a dermoid turning cancerous is almost very, very less. The problem, however, with dermoid is that it is a high candidate for undergoing ovarian torsion. And hence, the bottom line is, again, any dermoid cyst that is over 4 centimeters in size is a dermoid that may need to be surgically removed. One important point to note, in case of a dermoid cyst, unlike its predecessors, uh, which we talked about, which were a simple cyst, a hemorrhagic cyst, and a corpus luteal cyst, no form of oral or injectable medicine is going to work. If you have to tackle the cyst, then a dermoid cyst has to be tackled surgically and there is no role of any sort of medical management for tackling a dermoid cyst whatsoever. After dermoid cyst, we move on to a little less common category of cysts that we encounter. And these are the cysts we, which we call as serous cystadenomas and mucinous cystadenomas. These are normally not encountered very commonly in practice. But suffice to know that these cysts will also grow to larger sizes. And as in case of previous cysts, the cutoff for considering surgery is 5 centimeters and above. So about 4 to 5 centimeters is the cutoff after which you would consider surgery in these situations. Also, these cysts will not respond to any sort of medicines. So once you have a cyst that seems to be a serous cystadenoma or a mucinous cystadenoma, you can be sure that these cysts will undergo surgery at some point of time or the other. How to make a diagnosis between these different types of cysts? <clears throat> that is the job of the person who is doing the sonography. Uh, he or she will be able to tell you reliably what type of cyst you have. And if there is any doubt, one can always do a CT scan or an MRI to confirm. The last two types of cysts that we must talk about before we conclude is one is a para-ovarian cyst. This is also an inborn cyst, something that is there since birth and increases slowly as the age advances. But this type of cyst is characteristic and different because this is not located within the ovary. This is located outside the ovary or besides the ovary. This type of cyst, again, does not respond to any sort of medicines at all and has to be surgically removed. Again, like in all previous cysts, the cutoff criteria is four to five centimeters 
after which the risk of undergoing torsion and damaging the ovary adjacent to the cyst remains and hence this sort of cyst must be excised and must be removed the last variant which probably could be the commonest but is not talked about in gynae circles at least as a cyst is the polycystic ovary these are cysts which form during the course of stimulation if you are undergoing infertility treatment or naturally by a hormonal imbalance in the body earlier these sort of cysts used to require some sort of surgical intervention however now most of the times we are able to manage these cysts by natural means like diet and exercise and at the most medicines so we are going to have a separate video on how to manage polycystic ovaries naturally without surgery but suffice to say in this video that most of the times unless it is a specific patient who has not responded to any other type of treatment polycystic ovaries do not require any surgical intervention at all so i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions please leave your questions in the comment section below and i will be happy to answer these questions and if you like the video please click on the icon above to subscribe to our channel and to keep receiving more updates thank you